Howdy, peeps and peoples. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. We've been so daggone busy here at the mill. It's been, it's been nuts. I mean, absolutely nuts, and I'm not exaggerating. People's been trying to get a hold of me and stuff like that, and they're like, what happened to Wade? He fell off the face of the earth. I've been busy. Stevie and Big Meat and uh, Derek and them's been helping, and, and um, Robin and Chris and that, this, that, and the other, and whoever. Uh, else has come in kind of everybody's played a little bit of a role into it. I haven't but uh, big meat mostly and Stevie I just took old blue and starting to fix old blue back up now what happened Is I don't want to get into it and I don't want to start slinging mess uh, Big meat always told me he said uh, gotta watch slinging shit tater you get hit in the face with the bucket fool <laughs> Which is good advice. Most advice he's that man's gave me over the years uh, has pretty much been locked in the vault. He's been a pretty big mentor to me. Um, but anyways, uh, the people we sent this truck to couldn't get to it. They got covered up, got busy, and couldn't get to this truck. So we finally got the had to had to have a truck back, and we are about two months late getting this thing back. So it's it's a mess, but. It's in good hands. It's coming along quite nicely, and them two are fixing it up really, really nice. And um, but here's where we started. This is when we first got our truck back. We had to go up and get it towed back. And here's what it looks like when we first got it back. I mean, it's pretty daggone rough. I mean, yeah. And what had happened is. It was a it was a mess. So like what we wrecked was a really good truck. What we wrecked was a had a Caterpillar motor, C15 6NZ single turbo motor, the 18 speed transmission. I think it was pushing 550 horse or something like that, and had a heavy duty 52,000 pound rears with full lockers. I mean, it, and wet kit. This thing was the truck of all trucks. It's probably the best truck on the on the place, really, when you factor in. The wheelbase was like 202. For day cab stuff, it was the perfect length. Had a stretched out cab in it that had a lot of feet, leg room and everything. It's just a fantastic, one heck of a truck. Just one heck of a truck. But here's the thing, when you got something like an, a corn binder, uh, those of you not to know, an international, um, when you got a corn binder and you got it specked out like a big stretched out Peterbilt, when you go to work on it in a situation like this, it's pretty hard to find parts for it. Because most people goes with cheap, which is a Cummins. That's a cheap motor. I don't know, it works. We get along fine with our Cumminses. But and all the Cummins people that's offended, I'm sorry, but it's a cheap motor. Everybody knows that it's a cheap motor. Don't operate good. M14 is good motor. If you own it, if you buy it, you own it, you operate it. It's a good motor. As long as you don't have to drive it. <laughs> they got plenty of power, but the drivability sucks. Torque curve sucks. The revs revving on it sucks. It's just, and it's a loud thumping piece of crap when you're driving down the road. It's just loud and thumpy, and there's just a lot of things I don't like about it. As an operator, as an owner, it's probably one of the best motors we own as far as the bottom line. Saying you're in it to make money, I'm so I I understand, but we're all owner operator mentality type of people here that works at our company. So we want to run cats. And we don't want to run any old cat. We want a C15, 3406E, Blackie's a 3406B. We want cats. We want big displacement cats. That's what we want to run. So, you got to have the wiring harness to match it. And the wiring harness in this cab that got bought for this thing is your typical run of the mill corn binder cab it had some kind of either Cummins or Detroit or some cheap thing like that that's what was wired into this cab this cab did not have a lot of the fancies and trinkets and stuff that this other truck had uh, that Stevie's original truck had and it was just a diamond in the rough it's just hard to find parts for this thing because there's just not that many of them out there if you buy a corn binder you're looking for cheap 
You're usually looking for cheap. You aren't looking for the big fancy cat, the big 18 speed, the big 52,000 pound rears and the full lockers and wet kit and all that stuff that goes along with it. You buy Pete or you buy Kenworth or some people buys a Western Star, but that's what you buy. But when you go to buy a used truck, which is what we bought, if you buy an international, which we have great dealership, our international dealership, Sternbergs are fantastic to us, love them. But if you go to buy a used truck that you want spec to the to the max, well, I tell you what, if you buy an international with all the guts in it, you're going to get a pretty good deal. If you're going to intend to run this truck for a long life, like we did, so. We got it for a good deal, but we wasn't intending on totaling the daggone thing. So, it's not an easy undertaking. It never has been. Big Meats re-resurrected a few dead trucks before. And those of you out there just wondering, why in the heck are you messing with a dead truck? Because I'm here to tell you, what they're fixing is not your average dead truck. What they're fixing is a truck. You know what I mean? So... Those of you that's not to know, when you drive down the street and you look at a, well, there's a white one, there's a white International, there's a white Peterbilt, there's a white Freightliner. You, even if you got a row of Freightliners, say you got freight checkers, you got a row of freight checkers, and you're sitting there looking at them, and they all look identical from the outside. That don't mean a daggone thing. Usually, if you're looking at freight checkers, or you're looking at internationals, or you're looking at Valvo, or... Yeah. You're looking at cheap stuff. You're looking at cheap. You're looking at cheap trucks. That's what you're looking at. Now, sometimes you can spec up, spec them up to be a good truck, but they're cheap. They're meant to be bought cheap. They're meant to run in a cheap fleet. And to be flipped. Truck's meant to be flipped, not turned over. I mean, flipped every so many hundred hours or thousand, hundred thousand miles, flip them. Get a new one. Keep them updated. That type of thing. That's what they're made to do. Now, a Pete, when you look at a roll of Pete's or a roll of Kenworth's, what you're looking at is a truck that's meant to be bought as an owner operator truck. It's meant to be run till the wheels plumb fall off of it. You fix it up and run it again. Their trucks is made to be driven by professional drivers that loves driving trucks, that loves working on trucks, that loves trucks, period. They're not meant to be the nickel dime or dozen truck driver. <clears throat> now, Blackie, I tried to make a big truck, a big boy truck out of Blackie, and Big Meat's done a lot of work on Blackie over the years, too. You know, we try to keep, I call them country boy, well, everybody calls them country boy Cadillacs. That's what we're after. We're after Caterpillar. We're after an 18 speed. Blackie's got a 13 speed, same kind of scenario. But you're after big stuff. You're after big parts. You're after, they're not the lightest truck on the road, but they're not doing light duty work. They're doing heavy duty work. These trucks work. All right? So, that's why it is what it is. Because I've had a lot of flack on this. Caught a lot of flack from this situation. And this is why it is. And, it, and it, I hope this information helps some of you that's not in the trucking world or whatever or looking to get in the trucking world to teach a little thing or two maybe about trucking. Or maybe teach you what not to do, like I do timber cutting, obviously, from what I've been hearing for everybody. <laughs> All right. Today is the February the March the 4th. <clears throat> Trying to get me bitches thrown together. I'm falling behind on bitches. Been busy, man. We've been so busy. But here we are. We're helping Stevie get his thing done and do his thing. Hope y'all like this. I've been busy. There's Stevie's truck. There's old Blue. Man, to pull that cab back off so I could fix it. The cab had the wrong wiring harness in it. It was wired up for a Cummins or something. I don't know what the heck they had going on there. But Big Meat been working on it with Stevie and Derek and them. And there's his old bent up door sitting by the garage there. Let's go in and see what they got going on, on the inside. 
this is one of them deals when I thought I was recording at normal speed and I sent her yak and they'd been pulling stuff out of here and everything and they basically gutted the whole interior of this truck but and I did all the talking but nobody could hear the talking because I was recording in high speed but they basically took the old this the new cab and there's the old cab that Derek and them's picking up right now and they took all the harness out of it cause uh, they got the wrong cab for it the cab they got for it's for Detroit or something weird like that and the cab we had is for a caterpillar so we had to gut the wiring out of it and get all the caterpillar wiring and basically put the new harness on it and everything and uh, there's the new hood which is new new to us but used uh, it, but but the truck it's a mess it's a freaking mess the cab wasn't the right cab and uh, the it's a mess there wasn't this is like a deluxe cab that got re wrecked and then we was trying to replace it I guess with a some of bucking uh, you know the budget cab well that we had to move a bunch of dollar we I say we I mean Stevie and big meat had to move a bunch of stuff put up oh it was extensive work okay here is what all's on it, Stevie. There's that, there's, there's this. See, we could have used this hood. Yeah. I guess they got a pretty good hood for his Oh, unit. And heck, he could buff it up and just use this hood. Really? <laughs> but. The car fits him real well too. Yeah, car fits him real well. You know, that's the type of truck he thinks, yeah. But, uh, all right, um, Eric, he wanted something with the, some kind of jug. He wanted some of these jugs or something. Yeah, I see what he's talking about on my, oh, there's his, oh, no, it won't affect my nut anyways. It goes around it. He needs that from the other side, and I think I'm going to need that too. The radiator tank thing, my Bob. Oh, I see. Oh, we can flop it over. No, we can't flop it over neither. Thinking out loud, thinking out loud. All right, Stevie, is the mirror on that side good? Because I think they need mirror brackets. There you go, Stevie, if you want new sissy sticks. Roadmasters. Okay, C15. Uh, battery boxes. Step ain't too bad on the bottom. That's a heck of a battery box, ain't it? Mm-hmm. It's a nice looking battery box. Okay. Hi, Mr. Kitty. Ooh, these have been sca scavenged, but they good looking battery box, though. Damn, man, it is a good looking battery box. Really? Hmm. Boy, Steve and Big Meat, they sprayed the, their primer on today on the cab. Wow, that looks good. It's a two-part primer. Or two different primers. And uh, they said the first part went on great, but the second part, they said, is awful orange peely, but they said they'll have to sand through it anyways. Wow, guys. There's all our little gadgets hanging, our doors, and these other gadgets. Ah, little cab mounts, and knickknacks. And... Wow. Let's see what it looks like up on top. Oh yeah, looking good, boys. Yeah, I wish I had, Stevie's got pictures he's gonna share with me. He said I could share with y'all. But I mean, they done. They've been doing one heck of a job. They've been really into it now, boy. Mmm, boy. Mmm, boy. Mmm. 
here it is painted and uh, they're putting it that the interior back together now at the point at the March 5th when I'm doing this yakking they've got the cab done the cab is done and big meat start on the hood today on March 5th. Now, I don't know when I took these pictures, and I didn't have any information or any vigil when they was doing stuff, because in the middle of the, when they was doing this stuff, I was busy butthole deep in uh, alligators down the other end. So, I mean, all of us that's doing the maintenance around here this, this winter have been wow. We have not wasted one minute of time fiddle farting around we have been busy all daggone winter stevie and big meat got into this thing and they are still butthole deep in it and uh but look at it look how beautiful it's looking them guys are doing one heck of a job and there's stevie's got him a little drop visor it's going to look better than it did before by far <clears throat> gotta look at the chrome air intake on the side i mean they are putting the pretty pretties on it it's going to be Stevie said it's going to look way too nice to haul logs with, that's for sure. <laughs> and he's working on his stacks also, getting his stacks put together to where he could have kind of like a customized exhaust that don't cost the company a crap load of money because we kind of got some exhaust back there to kind of do something special for Stevie. And uh, he, he battled this visor, he said. And then Big Meat battled all the daggone wiring. I wish I could have showed credit of how much he went actually went through on this. Because I'm telling you, man, they had stuff slung out everywhere. And he had, had to rewire the whole daggone thing. It's ridiculous. When you're doing one of these trucks, I've not done one myself. I've seen Big Meat do a few. But you got to match the cab of what you wrecked with the cab that you buy to put on it new windshield and everything too there if not there's going to be all heck to pay and, and it ain't going to turn out very good and you got to rewire the whole son of a buck big meat's done a few of these cabs and it it wasn't easy on him I'd, uh, either time any time it, it's not you got to unwire the whole daggone thing and wire a whole new one up you know and it takes time now, I'm not going to put a real fancy video together or nothing on this thing. I, I don't have the time to fart with it uh, and apologize for that. Uh, if you want to see more things on this truck, go to Stevie's Facebook page and look up Steve Billow, Billow uh, YouTube page. And he might have it on his YouTubes. I can't remember. I mean, me and him has hardly barely talked this whole time we've been doing stuff i've been in the sawmill and he's been up here on this and uh, big meat i've just been passing him i don't know much about what either one of them's doing i go in there once in a while and check on them and my gosh they are doing one heck of a job they hooked up they had to put a hole the window and the passenger door of course this cheap daggone economy cab that, that was bought for it they had to cut a hole in the door to put the, the install, the, the, the curb window in the door there. You know, some of them trucks got the curb window. Had to put the curb window in this one because cause, cause, cause the daggone economy cab that was bought for this thing didn't have that. They had to do a whole pile of stuff to it. I mean, there was a pile of stuff done to it. And uh, hook up all electric locks and door locks. Of course, everything in the electric windows, the power this, the power that, all the power, fancy, fancy, pretty, pretties. And everything is set outside in the weather and been crapped up and stuff wasn't working. There was, I think the flasher unit was stuck. There's a few relays stuck. There was uh, <clears throat> door lock stuck, all this stuff. There was just a bunch of work that these two put into it. Now, I'll try to get it when they get done and they get to cruising around in it, uh, they get to driving the truck around. I'll try to sneak over there and get some video of it and stuff. And record some. Who keeps talking? Oh, we're doing a sawmill text. We have a sawmill text every night where we all kind of link together and catch up on what went on at the mill. But I'll try to get that for y'all and uh, share that directly. And I apologize for this video not being nothing too daggone fancy or too in depth um, as far as detail and stuff like that. I'll get you back later, I promise, and apologize for the daggone not getting uh, the time to do it upright, okay? 
just running, hitting the ground running. I got some good stuff coming, and I got to get to it. Later on, guys. Have a good one. Don't forget to hit the bell, all that good mess, and everything, yada, yada. Thank you, Overnowskis.